So Uprising is out, and I've been brewing up what I believe to be one of the most powerful Blitz decks in the format. The new set gave her a lot of new powerful tools, so let's dive into the deck tech for Icelander in Blitz. So Icelander has the ability to play blue cards at instant speed from her arsenal, and gives your opponent a frostbite token whenever you play an ice card on their turn. She's very different from the last wizard hero Kano, who's mainly a hero focused on high damage combos on your opponent's turn, or playing more of a mid-range strategy with Icelander. And this can really only happen with the power of the new wizard weapon, Waning Moon. No joke, this sort of mid-range strategy would be impossible without this weapon. It has the ability to deal arcane damage as an instant as long as you've played a non-attack action card, and deals more damage on your opponent's turn. This is a powerful ability that gives Icelander a lot of additional damage output, especially on your opponent's turn. If possible, you want to be using this weapon on each and every one of your opponent's turns. To do this, we run a lot of blue ice cards, the best of which have to be the three ice wizard cards, Frosting, Aetherhale, and Ice Bolt. These three can deal some arcane damage, but also give frostbites to the opponent if played on their turn. Along with the Waning Moon, they can become quite efficient ways to damage your opponent while slowing them down with frostbites at the same time. We also run Winter's Bite and Arctic Incarceration, which can further tax our opponent's resources, making their turns potentially quite awkward, especially when played on their turn. Cold Snap can freeze the opponent's arsenal, and nets us card draw when played from our arsenal. A useful effect, as we naturally already want to play the card from arsenal anyways. We also run Channel Lake Frigid, the all-star that taxes all our opponent's actions, and if you pitch properly, can stick around for multiple turns. This one is especially good when played at instant speed, as you can skip out on the flow counter check for the first time you use it. And finally, to round out our blue ice cards, we also run Blizzard, a way to shut off our opponent's go-again effects unless they pay two resources. And being an instant naturally means you don't have to arsenal this card to use its effect. And with Icelander's effect, it will give your opponent a frostbite even when played from your hand. Blizzard has never been better with any other hero. Along with our Ice Blues, we're also running a number of other blues as well. Energy Potion is a great arsenal card, as it can get you two free resources anytime you need them. There is a hidden mode on Energy Potion, where you can play it from arsenal on your opponent's turn, and immediately sack it for the resources to use Waning Moon for three free arcane damage. So definitely some powerful things you can do. Along with it, we also run Blue Aether Ice Vein, a powerful arcane spell that can strip cards out of our opponent's hand when fused. We also run Blue Emeritus Scolding, a powerful 4 arcane damage when played at instant speed. A good rate of arcane damage for a blue card from Arsenal. We also run Blue Scalding Rain, a bad version of Aether Hail, but that card is really strong, so a slightly worse version is still quite a powerful card. Finally, we run the Icelander specialization card, Ice Eternal, a way to spend a lot of resources and give your opponent a lot of frostbites, with the ability to deal arcane damage on Fuse. This doesn't give frostbites at a particularly effective rate, but it can be a decent turn 1 play, and can be used flexibly as an instant from Arsenal. And yeah, that's all the blue cards we run. We don't run any yellows, so onto the reds. We run some red versions of cards we've already discussed, including the three Ice Wizard cards, which can't be played at instant speed from Arsenal, but are quite efficient attacks on your turn, and can help with the Ice Fusions too. Along with these, Red Scalding Rain is another efficient wizard attack, and Red Aether Ice Vein is a powerful way to strip cards out of the opponent's hand with a Fuse. Five Arcane Damage is going to be almost impossible to fully block for most heroes, so this is a powerful option on your turn. And finally, we actually run a couple of attack actions as well. Since the opponent will likely be prepared for you to solely use arcane damage, these attack actions can end up taking them by surprise. Enlightened Strike is a powerful and flexible attack that can be used with awkward hands with fewer blues than we might want, and can hit hard for 7 if that's the mode you choose. Along with it, the new card Fiendral's Fighting Spirit also hits for 7, and can gain you life if you attack or block with it while your life total is below your opponent's. Since Icelander naturally comes with less health than other heroes, this can be used to great effect near the start of the game, a powerful option on both attack and defense for sure. 
and that's the main board. For equipment, we run the Arcanite Skullcap for the defense. Once again, since your life total starts below most heroes, Skullcap is often enough going to start the game online. Alongside it, we run the Fiendrel's Spring Tunic for the free resource it gives every once in a while. For the arms, we run the Ironhide Gauntlets for the two defense. It costs a resource, but often enough when playing at instant speed from Arsenal, you may find turns where you have an additional resource, so this can be used efficiently then. And finally, for the legs, we run the Wizard All-Star, Storm Striders. While we do not necessarily use them for a major combo, like how Kano usually runs them, if your opponent is at around 6 life or less, you can definitely use the Storm Striders to defeat an opponent who's overextending their turn by playing an instant speed Red Arcane damage spell from hand. The Storm Striders is a powerful piece that definitely helps us close games out. For the sideboard, against other wizards, we bring in the Hope Merchant's Hood and the Metacarpus Node, along with the new wizard chess piece, Alluvian Constellus, which can turn our opponent's arcane damage into resources for a waning moon. Definitely an important piece against other wizards. We also bring the Constellus in when facing off against Runeblades as well. And yeah, that's the deck. In playtesting, it's been incredibly powerful having good matchups into many of the more aggressive decks in the format, like Chain and Ira. As long as you use your disruption properly, and use the Waning Moon as often as you can, you should have success with the deck. Though do be careful about the matchups into Guardian, as if a Guardian carries AB5, you may have a tough time beating them. Though, if you play your cards right, it's definitely not an unwinnable matchup. But yeah, let me know what you think of the deck. And if this is the sort of content that interests you, be sure to subscribe. I've been brewing with some of the other Uprising heroes, so stay tuned for some other deck techs. But that's it for now, I'll talk to you guys later. Bye!